Welcome everyone, my name is Mark, I'm a personal trainer and sports scientist and this is my third video in this series of how to create your own workout and diet plan which we both will do simultaneously starting as of next Monday the 12th of September. If you are watching this any later, it doesn't matter, you can still do this challenge because it's live on YouTube, you know, you can do it whenever you want. So if you haven't seen my first video, click over here, that's where I teach you all about calories and meal planning and so on and so forth. The second video yesterday is also linked up here, that is where I talk about diet, um, you know, when to eat, what to eat and what kind of supplements to take. And this video, which we're going to be talking about now, is tracking your progress because it's mandatory that you know that you're making progress within these 30 days. And so what we will be looking at is how to take your body fat measurements, how to weigh yourself, how to make, how to take proper body measurements and taking pictures, of course. So here's a link. If you click on that, we'll take you straight to my website to a blog where you then can download a PDF, which is called Tracking My Progress. If you double tap on that, it's basically a outtake of my 12 week athlete, which I will exclusively give to you here as well. And it's like, a, it's four pages of my actual uh, 12 week athlete and it tells you exactly how to track your progress. So what you'll see is the first page is, you know, tracking your progress and you can see 12 week athlete because it's part of that program. It's four pages. On the second page, I talk about four measurements or four ways of tracking your progress, how you do it when you're on the 12 week athlete. But the nice thing is it tells you exactly how to do things. And that's why I want you to download it and read that properly because it gives you all the things you need. For example, I want you to take before and after pictures and it tells you exactly how you should be standing, what kind of angles you should be using to take, to take that picture. The same thing in the 12 week athlete, I ask you to do videos of your workouts because it's nice to do a video of, let's say, um, your very first workout and the one at the very end and you will see a massive difference because you're able to do and push more, but it's not mandatory to do any videos. This is just, you know, optional. And then at the end, uh, the third way of tracking your progress here on the 12 week athlete and also which I urge you to do here, but we'll talk about this in more detail in a second is, you know, how to take your body measurements and there's a little table if you print out that page you then can take a tape measure and you measure your biceps your chest your waist your hip your thigh your calf or any other thing you want and then you put it in there and then after 30 days 60 days 90 days or however long you want to do this you can then you know populate that sheet and you will see the difference you will have made or the progress you've made and then we're talking about how to weigh yourself. Um, I'll talk about, you know, what you have to watch out for when you weigh yourself as well. Let's do this now. So let's talk about how to weigh yourself. Now I use a scale called the Tanita scale, this one here, and I actually put a link in the description below so you can actually see the scale. The reason why I bought this is because it's very small. I can, you know, because I'm traveling around, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. You can use any scale you want, but this one is a portable one, really good. You can use it anytime, anywhere, any place. Now the PDF you downloaded, it gives you really good guidance on how to weigh yourself. But I wanted to add a couple of things there and that is that I actually weigh myself every single day compared to just once, you know, every Monday for example. So what I say in that PDF is weigh yourself on a Monday morning on an empty stomach, wear the same clothes and make sure the, the scale also is on the same place on the floor and not on carpet. You know, it should be on a hard floor, a bit like this. That's it. One thing I want to add is don't get hung up on the weight too much. It's just one indication that you're sort of on track with if you're gaining or losing weight. But you know, the most important thing is still is how you feel and how you look in the mirror. You will know if you lose weight on some areas and also you might fit into your clothes better. So now you can do it either way. You can weigh yourself just on a Monday like I described in the PDF or you can do it like I do, weigh yourself every single day because it gives you sort of an indication if you are on track or not. Now the thing is with weight, it fluctuates very much. So I can gain and lose anything between one to three kilos a day if I want to. If I manipulate my water intake or what foods I eat, I can really gain that weight easily. So in a way you have to be aware of that. That's why I always say measure yourself, let's say for seven days, every single day, and then take the, the sum of it and divide it by seven. And then you have an, an average, like a, a rolling average over seven days, and that will give you an indication if you are on, on track. Because you might have a day where you're, you, you know, you, you had a bit of too much water at night and you ate some carbs, so you're, it's all sucked up in your body and you, you step on the scale in the morning, you're two kilos more, and you're like, fuck, I'm not on track. But then the next day, you, you lose, uh, let's say, uh, two, two or two and a half kilos, and you're half a kilo down. So that's why make sure that if you weigh yourself every day, you take a rolling average of seven days. That's how I would do it and that's how I do it. So 
you will see me do that anyway when you keep watching this series because in the 30 days I'm going to put up a vlog and I'm going to show you how I'm going to weigh myself every single day. Long story short, you can weigh yourself either every single day like I do, make sure that you don't get hung up on the weight because it's something which will fluctuate depending on uh, what you're eating. So you do the rolling average of seven days and then you see if you're on track. If you don't want to get too involved in weight because it's messing with your head, just do it once and do it on a Monday like I describe in the PDF, you just download it. Next up, let's talk about tape measure. How to do that? Here we go. Right, what is a tape measure? This is a tape measure. Nice and easy, right? <laughs> Next up, we're gonna talk about the tape measuring and how to do that and why you should be doing that. Now, first of all, tape measuring is a really great tool to measure your progress because you know, we all lose fat differently on different areas of our body or we also gain different uh, muscle on different areas of our body. It's always different for different people. That's why the best way of t making sure that you are making progress is by also measuring, you know, certain areas of your body. Now, this is something where, um, you know, if you've got the standard sort of um, areas you can measure, which you've seen in my PDF. So you measure your chest, your waist, your hip, your, your belly, your, your carve, your whatever, your arm. But there might be some areas you want to specifically measure because they are pruned to your sort of, um, let's say, body shape. Most of the time people have a problem when it comes to uh, figuring out what is your, your chest and what's your waist and what's your belly area. So what I've found with uh, most of my clients is that they have a sort of waist area which is, you know, sort of okay. And then they go straight to the hip. So they leave out the belly. So I always uh, urge people to, let's say, you know, your waist is the smallest area of your upper body. And the way I found where it normally sits for, for men and women is slightly above the belly button. So it would be something around here for me. You know, I'm, I'm not standing properly, so you can't really see it that, that well. So you just stand like this and then you would read it off here. And there you go. Now, that's great, but most of us don't, we're not fat around the waist, even though we might lose the weight there, but we might have a bit of belly sticking out. So you can see, you know, for me, I've got my fat around here. I always had it there, that's normal for me. But, you know, I also wanna be able to, to show you sort of a difference in my challenge. So that's why I've got a good amount of fat around here, which I can lose easily. So what you then do in terms of belly is you use, I always say for me, it's sort of this area here and here. So what I do is I measure that area as well for me. And that's just specific to my personal body. So I measure that area and then I would write that down. Make sure that you find areas on your body that for women, you know, you've got these flappy arms maybe. So you want to measure left and right, not just one side, not just the, the, the one arm here. Or for the guys, they want to know if they got more guns now. So make sure you, you've got two legs, you've got two arms, so measure all of it and write it down in a, in a table and keep track of it. You know, the date and when, when you measured it. That's basically, it's very simple, you know, using a tape measure how to do it, it's not, not uh, rocket science. Again, here, it's, it's up to you which areas you measure on your body. Make sure you take the areas which are specific to you because we're all different and make sure you keep them in a table. You can use the one I sent in the PDF or you can write one yourself. That's basically it. All you need to know is worth tape measuring. Let's do body fat. So next up, we're going to talk about body fat and how to take your body fat measurements. Now, there are scales. This one isn't one of them. You know, you stand on them and it's called BIA, bio intermittence analysis. And that is something which will send a current through your body and then gives you sort of a body fat percentage. But these are very, very inaccurate, just like you've seen the body measuring tool I was using before. You know, the scalp one in my 500 and 1000 rep challenge, you haven't seen it, click over here. But, you know, they are sort of, you know, they're not that accurate. The reason why I use them is just to show you the progress. So if you use one tool at a time and you use it before and after, you can show the difference because it's the same tool. So it's, just, it's uh, the same thing with the scale. Make sure you use the same scale every day and not one at the beginning and one at the end because the discrepancy might be too big and you're like, oh wow, I lost 10 kilos, but you haven't. So this is a tool I ordered from Amazon. I'm gonna put the link in the link, uh, description below. I'll just open it here. I'm using a tool called the Skinfold Capillar, which uh, you can purchase on Amazon. I put a link in the description below, it's like five quid. Um, it's a really cheap option to figure out your body fat percentage. And it's something I do as a personal trainer and loads of doctors and when you go to people, they use these Skinfold Capillars. 
you know, they're obviously more expensive ones, which will give you a more accurate sort of uh, measure, but just for the sake of getting an overall idea of your body fat percentage, this is a great tool to use. Now, the way it works is you, you're you measuring a skin fold. A skin fold is just basically, if you pull away some skin, you've got a skin fold here. And that is then, you know, when you when you pull it away, it sort of, your skin wraps around and the, 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 the fat in between is the subcutaneous fat. That's the fat you're gonna be measuring with this tool. Now you will see at the side, it has this little thing which says press. So when, let's say, this is the skin I'm, I, I want to measure, you can see that it will click at a point. You might hear that. And that is when you're applying the right amount of pressure, because you could now measure the skin fold like, like very soft, and then the, the reading wouldn't be right. So that's why you're, you're pressing, and at one point it will click, and then you know you've got the exact pressure you need. When it comes to skin fold measuring, there's one thing you need to know. It's like with the calorie calculator you've seen and downloaded. There are more formulas you can choose from. It's the same thing with the skin fold measuring. You can do a three point, a five point, a seven point, a nine point uh, measure, meaning you, you take more points on your body and therefore the more points you take, the more accurate it is. Um, now, the downside of this is that some of these points you will not be able to reach yourself. So if you take a three-point measure, which you will uh, get instructed when you buy this, you know, I just done it myself and I'm now 13% body fat, which isn't true. And it is because it only takes three points of your body to determine your body fat percentage. So what I want you to do is to open my meal planning tool, which you've downloaded already, and then you'll see at the bottom, you know, you've got your calorie calculator, which you already filled out. Um, the meal planner you might use if you want to, but we are now interested in the third tab, which is the progress tracker. This is where I integrated the actual seven side capillar method from Jackson and Pollock into this um, uh, spreadsheet. So you don't have to worry about, you know, how to calculate and stuff. You only have to put in the millimeters, which you can read off this um, capillar at the bottom. It says millimeters. So when you do the measurement um, on your on your skin folds, you just have to read off uh, the, the, the millimeters at the bottom and put them in. So let's say you're going to measure your chest. You know, you're measuring your chest. You have a look and it says, let's say 20. So you put in the 20 millimeters here and so on and so forth. And you see it starts populating your body fat on the side. So then you do abdomen 20, your thigh maybe 30, your triceps 10. Subscapular is the one below your shoulder blade, which will, let's say, 20 as well. Now, when we talk about suprailiac, just means it's the skin fold between your belly button and your hip. So it's right here. And let's say that's 20 as well. And then mid axillary is here on the side. It's just below here, that's where your mid axillary is. And let's say that's 20 as well. And you can see now I would have had 20% body fat if these were my numbers. There's one difficulty with this whole measuring and that is that some of these points you will not be able to reach yourself. Therefore, you will need someone who does that with you. And I found a video which I'm linking up here and that actually, um, you know, talks you through this whole measuring process really well. And I didn't see the point in creating it myself because, you know, if there's a video out there which does it very well, I just link to it. Just watch that video. She explains it very nicely how to find these points on your body and then how to use this tool actually to uh, find those uh, measurements. All you then need to do is you take those measures and you populate them into the body fat tracker here and then you click save. And then the nice thing here, I have, uh, you can see 30 days later, you can do the same test, and then you kind of see the, the difference in terms of body fat if you lost something. Right, so this is all you need to know in terms of tracking your progress, so make sure you download that PDF file on my blog, which gives you instructions on how to take your picture, how to weigh yourself, how to measure yourself, and so on and so forth. If you want to purchase this product, there's a link in the uh, description below uh, that you got your body fat percentage. And that body fat percentage is also mandatory to then calculate your calories properly, which you can do in the same tool in my meal planning tool. If you haven't downloaded that yet, click over here as well and make sure that you get that tool. Right, so in tomorrow's video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about workouts, so make sure you stay tuned. So how to plan your workouts, how to plan your rest days, your weights, your one rep maxes, you know, all that stuff I will talk about in tomorrow's video. So make sure you stay tuned. So now it's time to punch like button, punch subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow.
And now here at the top, if you can see it, there's this barcode. If you click on it, it opens your camera. Now you can hold the food you want to be scanning, and you just hold it over the barcode, and you will see it starts searching, and it found this milk. It says Haltbare Fett 